you will see that many of the Spanish encomendos are looking for labor. And why are they going to be looking for labor? It is because really of a new product that people are going to want all over the world. It gets you crazy even today if you if you eat it and it's going to be sugar. And you can see um, on the left side pictures here of modern manufacturing and processing of sugar cane. And then you can see on the right side here the people that they're going to turn to to plant and manufacture this product. They're get, the sugar cane is going to be grown on plantations. It was established in the 1500s or the 16th century, really along the coast of Brazil. And again, this is a very time-consuming process, and it requires a high demand of labor. And they would first turn to the Native Americans, but they have a dwindling population. They've either been killed by the soldiers or diseases, and now they will turn to enslaved Africans. And this is where we start talking about the Atlantic slave trade. Um, there is a decline of Native American population due to no immunity to diseases um, coming from the Eastern Hemisphere, like measles and smallpox. And due to this sharp decline, um, the encomendos and the landowners really needed a source of labor in their mind to survive the harsh working conditions. As a result, they will turn to African slaves. In 1518, the first Spanish ship carried enslaved Africans to the Americas. You will see that the Spanish are the first major European power uh, to use African slaves um, on a major level. And we will be looking more at some pictures and images and primary sources tomorrow in class on the African slave trade, but here's just some drawings that you will be looking at more closely later. It's very important for you to understand the triangle trade and to also understand that even though you know, in North America, especially in New England, the northern part, they do not have a lot of slaves, but so many people will benefit from the slave trade. Basically what happens, there's three legs or three parts to the triangle trade. And we'll talk about each of those parts. Uh, the first part, um, European goods were brought to Africa. Typically, they traded um, guns, cloth, and cash, and traded that, and brought that to the slave traders, and traded that for slaves. The slaves were then taken on a horrible passage, which we'll talk more about. They are shipped to the Americas, either, you know, the Caribbean or the southern part of the United States, and they were sold as slaves. Uh, they were often exchanged for sugar, molasses, and manufactured products that were made at the plantation. Then you will see merchants will then carry sugar, molasses, tobacco, um, raw cotton, and also um, American goods like furs, salt fish, and rum, which is rum is made from molasses, and they will then take that and trade it to back to Europe. So we've go, we've gone back really to the repeat part where this is going to be done over and over again. Find the repeat here. There we go. We've got the repeat, and you can kind of see how this is somewhat shaped like a triangle. You see how this is somewhat shaped um, like a triangle, and you would ask yourself who really benefited from the system. It really is um, the merchants who are becoming very wealthy in New England, even though they didn't own a lot of slaves, which is right up here. They're going to have a booming shipbuilding industry, fishing also tobacco and processed sugar down in here, uh, you will see the plantation owners will greatly benefit. So if you kind of look at this, this is the first to the second leg, and then all like slaves and what they create will then be traded up to merchants up here and sent back to Europe. Then the Europeans will go once again back to Africa and give the guns and the cloth and the cash in exchange for the slaves. Just to give you some numbers here, you can see how many slaves are exported. Uh, it, is, it varies from source to source. Uh, we're going to use what's in our textbook. Um, they are going to estimate that 11 million slaves uh, were really brought to the Americas by the time the Civil War started in 1861. And we want to specifically talk about that second leg of the triangle trade. This is the voyage from West Africa to the Caribbean or to the you know, the southern part of the United States. It's known as the Middle Passage. And we will talk about this, these floating coffins as these ships became to be called. 
um, you see that uh, they are encouraged to have children, you have a higher death rate, but it really is just horrible conditions. Like I said, they're called floating coffins. And let me take you through the process. Many of these slaves are going to be kidnapped, forcibly taken um, from inland villages. Oftentimes during the night, they are scared. It's men, women, and children. They are roped and chained together, and they would have to walk to the port cities up to a thousand miles. If you survive this far, then you're going to be held in a holding pen. And then when the European slave traders arrive, they would trade guns and cloth and cash for slaves. The voyage, if you made it on the ship, you would be packed. And you saw some pictures about that. The voyage could last anywhere from three weeks to three months. It just depends because they had a lot. They had horrible storms. You also had raids by pirates and mutinies. Uh, what a mutiny is, is these are slave uprisings on the ship and they were revolts by the revolts by the captives and they were again trying to get out disease really is the biggest threat and of the diseases i would say dysentery was probably the worst it is an intestinal inflammation you would get cramping you'd have severe diarrhea with mucus and blood and you would get so dehydrated that you would die um you see that suicide was more common than mutinies um Slaves would often hang themselves, they would starve themselves, or they would um, leap overboard um, and often be eaten by sharks or some animals or drown because that was better than what was going on inside the ship. This is a holding cell um, in Ghana, and this is where a lot of the slaves were actually held before they were put on the ship. And let's talk about some of the effects of the slave trade. Some of the effects... Um, most persons enslaved at the very beginning of this, in like the 15th century, they were prisoners of war. And the difference was if you were a prisoner of war, then hopefully your people would come back and you would then be released. But what we see starting to happen is that people are going to totally different lands and this becomes something that happens for life. As we said, they traded guns, gold, and other goods in coastal regions. And the demand grew so much from these European traders that they had to move further inland, as we had talked about before. Just to give you an example of King Alfonso, he was king of the Congo. He wrote a letter to King John of Portugal. He says, so great is corruption that our country is being completely depopulated. Some of the effects that I know you, you understand is there's a depopulation of Africans. Typically, they are look, slave traders are looking for the youngest and strongest men. These men are going to be taken um, in, from Africa. This is going to increase the warfare. Because imagine how upset and angry you would be if one of your family member, members were taken by another ruling group or village or country. And you're going to get want revenge because your family member is going to be gone. You will see that as the Europeans are trading for slaves, they're bringing in guns, and this will increase local power, and you also see a real loss of tribal identity. When you are finished, you will type in the following URL exactly, http colon backslash backslash goo dot gl backslash backslash capital S-L-I-N lowercase s capital F. Uh, please take the quiz and be prepared tomorrow to apply this knowledge that you have learned about the Atlantic slave trade in group activities. It should be a fun day.